So, what is up YouTube? I am Jacob Jones, or Joker777 as my channel name is called, and welcome to another review here on my channel, and uh, today I'm actually reviewing uh, The Tomorrow People, which is the brand new show on The CW about this guy named Steven Jameson. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to give just an overall, just kind of like, broad general view of what the show is about, just because last, or uh, Wednesday was the first episode, and... They're really, they're just kind of setting it all up. There's not a whole lot of detail to go into, so here we go. So, The Tomorrow People is basically about this guy named Stephen Jameson, and he comes to realize that he's not like your everyday, you know, human being. Um, basically, he finds that he is part of a group of people who are essentially the next step up in the evolution chain. And he's, he's a part of this group of people that have certain powers. And... He learns that basically these powers are the three T's. There's uh, telepathy, uh, telekinesis, and teleporting. And what happens is that he's basically seeing a shrink because he thinks he's crazy because he keeps waking up in the middle of the night and don't know where he goes because he's teleporting while he's asleep. Well, then he ends up meeting these two people who are supposedly the, the, the so-called leaders of this group of people called the Tomorrow People, and their names are Kara and John. And they basically come to him saying that you're basically, like, he's going to be the leader of this group of people, of this group of outlaws, because this group called the Tomorrow People is actually at war with these people called the Ultras. Now, the Ultras are just like the Tomorrow People. They have the same powers, but they've been recruited by the government, uh, run by this group of human beings who think that the Tomorrow People are going to use their powers for evil, when in reality, the Tomorrow People just want to be left alone. They just want to live normal lives, but the government see them as a threat. And we basically learn that um, the Ultras are after Steven because they know that he's going to be like this grand, powerful guy that can maybe help out uh, these Tomorrow Rebels that are trying to just, you know, live their lives, you know, day-to-day -day lives. And they get a hold of him, so Kara and John have to come bust him out. Now, they keep him in this room, and supposedly in this room the Tomorrow people cannot use their powers, but shocking surprise... Steven's the only one that can use his powers, and here's another little twist that she's coming. Steven actually has the ability to stop time, which no other Tomorrow person has ever done that. Now, what makes him so special is that he is actually the son of a Tomorrow person who a lot of people look to as a leader and a hero, and he believes that his dad is dead. And come to find out, his uncle, uh, Dr. Jedekiah Price, is actually, is that actually runs Ultra. He's, ba he's a human who is running Ultra to track down and stop these, um, to stop the Tomorrow People. And another big thing that you, that needs to be remembered is these Tomorrow People are incapable of killing. Like, they have a scene where Jedekiah basically brings in one of his agents, and he failed to grab, um, John, whenever John was stealing the information about Steven, and... He said to the tomorrow person, he hands him a gun and says, go ahead and kill me, and the tomorrow person can't do it because they can't kill anyone. And so that's really just like a general overview of what the show is about, and I will go into more detail, and I will give my thoughts as to what I felt about the show, uh, where do I think it's going, do I think it's heading in a good direction, the event, what I like, what I don't like, and so, I'm going to cover the tomorrow people. Let's see, here... First of all, let me just go ahead and say, this is basically generally the plot of that movie Jumper. Now, if they continue to follow the plot that Jumper has, this show won't last very long. Because Jumper was, let's face it, it wasn't so, a good movie at all. That right, away is a, that right away is a problem. When you take essential story elements from a story that's already happened, and it wasn't a story that did great in theaters and didn't do well in DVD sales, then that could kind of be a problem. Um, and plus one of their powers is they're able to teleport, which is essentially what they do in Jumper. And once again, you have the government who thinks these people are going to harm the people. Really, these people just want to live their lives, like in the movie Jumper. And it's ran by this guy who basically is opposed to every single person who has these abilities, just like in Jumper. And... I mean, there's just, a lot of, there's just a lot of parallels to that movie, and unfortunately that could really hurt it because, like I said, Jumper didn't do so great. And so now I'm just going to kind of like break down to the, um, what I like about the show. The things I do like is it's kind of an interesting premise. Uh, like I said, it is based off Jumper, but it doesn't look like they're going um, 
It doesn't look like it's going to be exactly like Jumper because Jumper, he basically allies himself with the Rebels, and here's a twist at the end of the episode. He actually decides to work for his uncle in Ultra, so essentially he's chosen to work for the bad guys, which is a twist that I don't think anyone saw coming that uh, watched the pilot episode for this. I definitely didn't see it coming. It was one of the few twists that caught me off guard, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, it has some likable characters. Uh, Steven is a pretty likable guy. John and Kara, they definitely have something going on. Uh, they tend to be, and I'm going to go ahead and put this out there, I think they're in a relationship just because in one of the scenes, um, John and Kara end up kissing, and he asks uh, Kara, does he need to be jealous of Steven? And we'll get to that in a second. Um, and once again, the whole relationships aspect, um, you really do feel the sense that Steven actually does care for his mom and for his brother, uh, Luca. And that's one of the weird things about the show. You have names like Jedekiah and Luca. Those are awesome names. Love those names. I mean, if I have a son, I'm going to name him either Jedekiah or Luca, one or the other, because that's too awesome of a name. And basically, that's, that's what Jedekiah Price uses to lure uh, Stephen to his side. He says, don't you care about your mom? Don't you care about your brother? Because you know your mom and your brother. You've known them your whole life. And here comes this random group of people telling you, you know, what they want you to believe, and so he uses that. He uses that relationship with his mom and his brother to kind of bring him over to his side of the line. Um, I'm looking at my notes here to see if there's anything important that I missed. Um, I don't think I have. So now we're going to go into the things I don't like. Number one is the predictability. This show was a little bit too predictable. Um, right away you can guess that Steven is going to be... Um, this great tomorrow person. You could tell he's going to be the leader of them. Um, you could pretty much see it coming that whenever you're in that room uh, where the tomorrow people can't use their powers, he's the only one that can do it. It was also very predictable that um, he was going to have a power that none of that none of them had. Um, so predictability could kind of be its downfall. Um, mediocre acting. Now, the acting was good, but it wasn't great. So, and there were definitely a lot of like mediocre performances. When you look at the basic cast, there's like six or seven characters, there's really only two that are famous, and that is Peyton List and Mark Pellegrino. Now, Peyton List was in shows such as Smallville, where she played Lucy Lane, which is where I remember her from, and then Flash Forward and Mad Men, so she's been around the block. Oh, excuse me, you have three, because Aaron Yu, who plays uh, one of the smaller people named Russell Kwan. Now, I get the feeling Russell is going to be every, like, a lot of people's favorite character, just because he has that likability, he has that um, sense of humor, and so I believe he's going to be a big character for everyone. He was, and Aaron used been in everything. Disturbia, um, 21, he was in that god-awful Friday the 13th remake, which I wish they would have never done, but that's beside the point. Mark Pellegrino, and this guy has been in everything. Um, I remember him as Jacob from Lost. And then the main guy who plays Steven is Robbie Amell. He played in Alcatraz, which is where I remember him from. And then he played in a bunch of one-off episodes. And so... He's got some talent under, like, he's had, he's had some uh, shots at being, like, at, um, at progressing his acting skills, but when you're just a one-offer, I mean, it's kind of hard to develop those skills, so I really think this show could be a great uh, learning curve for him, um, and who knows, maybe over the years, you know, these people will learn to play off each other a little bit better.